Now, so this is the analysis with elastic collision. So, um, so the question that I want to ask is what changes when this is inelastic? What constraint goes away? And when it is inelastic, the, the, the thing that goes away by definition is the conservation of kinetic energy. The moment someone says something is inelastic, you cannot use this anymore. Uh, you have to be given more information. Either someone will tell you how much energy is lost. That might be a one way they can tell you. Then in that case, you might set up a modified version of this. You would say, oh, there's some difference that you need to account for. Maybe that. But the moment someone says inelastic, uh, before any additional information is given, you um, have to get rid of your conservation of kinetic energy expression. That's one of the constraints that go away. Now, we do that if you are looking at conservation of momentum expression, what you will see is that um, we have an issue because we have only one equation remaining, but we still have two unknowns, V1 and V2. So we don't have enough information. <laughs> and this is where uh, for a general inelastic collision where you don't know how much energy is lost, the question really have to give you additional information. They might tell you how much uh, V2 is after collision, or they might tell you how much V1 is after the collision. The question has to give you some one additional piece of information so that you don't have more unknowns than your number of equations. Now, completely inelastic collision is different in this way. So with completely inelastic collision, the information that you are given, which is, um, won't always be spelled out for you, is this, that V1 is equal to V2. You can see it here in completely inelastic collision. I mean, well, I guess their masses don't have to be the same. In a completely inelastic collision, after they collide, they stick together and move together. So V1 is equal to V2. So that's the additional piece of information that a completely inelastic collision gives you. And on the topic of the thing that we started this uh, discussion with, which is um, why can we just say the final kinetic energy is zero? What constraint remains? Well, uh, this is the constraint that remains. Your momentum conservation, everything that we said for momentum conservation, it's still there, even for completely inelastic collision. So you are still under the constraint that the momentum must be conserved. So, so that's uh, because momentum is conserved, that's why it's not possible for this to be equal to zero. Because if uh, the final velocities are zero, it, especially in a situation where you have some initial momentum, then, uh, then, <laughs> then, uh, um, then your momentum won't be conserved. That's why these final velocities, they cannot be zero. So completely inelastic collision is really the situation where you lose the most kinetic energy that you can lose under the constraint where the momentum is conserved. So, in fact, if you set up this uh, experiment so that um, you have a zero initial momentum to start, you can actually see all of the kinetic energy go away. So, um, let me just set it up this way. Oh, I can't quite tell. Um, let's see here. So, zero point, okay, so I want this file to zero point five. All right, so I set up these two balls with an equal and opposite velocity, so that their total momentum will be zero. Uh, let's see. After they collide, yeah, they come to a complete stop, and kinetic energy is equal to zero. So 
So that's the constraint that remains uh, for completely inelastic collision. So I want to approach the completely inelastic collision slightly differently. So instead of saying that, instead of questioning, why do we have any kinetic energy left, which was the question I was asking this time, let me see if I can address, um, uh, let me imagine this uh, hypothetical scenario. Uh, you have a setup and the, the question doesn't tell you anything about elasticity of collision. But what they tell you is that after the collision, two things stick together. So in some way, the question might not make any statement about conservation of energy. The only thing that it tells you is that after the collision, the two things stick together. And what I would tell you is that if the question has told you that two things stick together, they have told you that this is completely inelastic collision, and you can actually prove that energy is not conserved without so you don't have to assume it you can just solve the question with the given information and prove that energy is not conserved this is how you do it so i think i can reuse most of it because the math will be substantially simpler with a completely inelastic collision than um than elastic collision what so let me do the analysis of um let me not call it completely inelastic because that's uh, maybe biasing it. Let me just say analysis of sticking collision. Um, so somehow in the question, you are told that two things stick together. And um, so I'm not going to invoke conservation of kinetic energy for one, because I'm not told that energy is conserved. <laughs> so if I'm not told something is conserved and I don't have any reason to justify that it's conserved, then okay, then I'm not making use of that. So let me just, but I do know it is a collision where internal forces dominate. So I can still say, okay, momentum is conserved. So let's start there. With the conserved momentum, then what I have, from this information that two things stick together is that I don't have to write out this after collision picture with two different velocities. Instead of having V1 and V2, I can say, oh, it's just gonna be V1 and V1, or simplifying it even further, it's going to be M1 plus M2 times V1. Then it's really simple. I have one unknown, one equation, I can solve for it. <laughs> so let's do that. So my solution for V1 is, well, let's solve V1 is equal to M1 um, divided by M1 plus M2 times V0. That's it. That's my answer. I'm, I'm done. So we did that answer for V1. Let's uh, explore uh, what happened to the kinetic energy. Was kinetic energy conserved after all? Or can we show that our kinetic energy must have changed? So our kinetic energy before is the kinetic energy of M1. That's kind of easy. It's one half M1 uh, V0 squared. Okay, let's work out kinetic energy after. So for kinetic energy after, we can treat the whole combined blob as one thing. So it'll be one half the total mass m1 plus m2 times the speed v1 squared. And uh, let me plug in this uh, expression for v1. Then what I have is m1 squared over m1 plus m2 squared times v0 squared. And there's a lot of common terms here, you know, one half, one factor of m1, and uh, v naught squared. All those are common, so we can look at the things that are different between the two lines to see how, how the kinetic energy, if it changed, changed. 
So let me just cancel this out with the one factor here. So really comparing the two expressions, what it looks like is kinetic energy after is kinetic energy before times a factor. And the factor will be m1 divided by m1 plus m2. And you can stare at this ratio for a bit and realize, hmm, if m2 is anything other than zero, as in if this mass exists, then uh, this ratio is going to be less than one. So your kinetic energy after the collision is going to be less than kinetic energy before the collision. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Um, in the scenario that you saw before, where m2 is equal to m1, uh, in that scenario, you see that this ratio will become one half. And that actually explains why our kinetic energy was going down to a half. And in the limiting case, where if uh, m2 goes to infinity, or, you know, if uh, I guess so that I'm not invoking infinity, in the limit where m2 is much, much, much greater than m1, then you see this ratio approaching zero. So if m2 is like a very large mass, like a wall, then m1 goes to it, sticks to it, then all of all, all of the kinetic energy goes away. When a mass sticks to a wall, it stops, nothing's moving, all the kinetic energy is gone, and you can get that. It just takes M2 being much bigger thing than M1. So, so that's the completely uh, that's the completely inelastic or sticking collision, and you can see that uh, even without someone telling you that there's something that dissipates away energy, uh, if you have a kind of collision where things stick together, it just uh, through this analysis, it must mean that energy cannot be conserved in a situation like that.